chicken apocalypse. What's happening guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm talking about my van. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I posted a photo of this in the community section uh, when I bought it. That was before I picked it up. So I've had it for two weeks now and when I bought it, when I picked it up, it looked like this in the inside. And we're about to go and have a look about what I've done in the last, you know, it's taken me about seven days to get where it is now. And then I've just added a few things like coat hooks and little bits and pieces like that. But the van is a 2009 Toyota Hi Ace Jumbo. So it's the high roof wide body version. I believe it's the biggest Toyota Hi Ace you can get. I could be wrong on that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody will. Um, it's a 2.7 litre petrol four wheel drive automatic and um, it's a really horrible yellow creamy color it probably doesn't come across in the video uh, but it's kind of a nasty cream yellow color i'll get it wrapped one day probably kind of like that color that khaki green um, just so it sort of blends in a little bit before we jump into the inside i want to just talk a little bit about my planning process and my thought process about planning the whole build and, and actually doing it so a lot of it was winging it but i did have a kind of basic layout that i wanted to do i just concentrated on the key things i wanted so i didn't care about a shower um, you know all the places that i'm going to be at there will either be a shower close by or uh, you know a gym membership um, from like one of those multi gyms like anytime fitness or whatever um, or there'll be a lake by nearby i can go for a swim or something so I didn't care about a shower, but I wanted somewhere to sit and be able to work on my laptop comfortably. And I wanted a big, comfortable bed. I didn't want a folding bed. So I wanted the biggest, most comfortable bed I could fit and just somewhere to cook. You know, the really basics, pretty much anything that I'm missing from most campers is the, uh, the shower. So anyway, let's jump into it. So here it is guys, all of the stuff I've done, like I said, in about seven days. So the very first thing I did was the floor. The easiest way to do the floor, and you're lucky if you have the sort of rubber plastic mat on the bottom that most vans have. Um, I just ripped that out and traced it around some ply sheets and then glued and screwed the ply sheet straight to the floor. I didn't worry about insulating the floor or anything like that because I didn't want to raise it um, to lose any more height. And then after I'd laid that ply flooring and I built all these cabinets in the bed, I just laid this cheap laminate flooring. It was about 30 bucks for the whole pack. And uh, it was just really easy to put down. Um, just screwed straight to the floor, nothing really fancy. So I've, I've not gone real fancy with this build. I just used the skills that I had from when I was a teenager, I'd done a bit of a building apprenticeship. So I had a fair amount of knowledge on just how to work with wood and stuff like that. But you know, this isn't a really fancy build. Basically, um, I had my layout in my head like I told you guys before. Everything else is just sort of winged around that. So all the framing is done pretty much with four by two. And the smaller stuff, I just use ceiling strapping, which is like 70 by 35, I think. Let's jump into it. So pretty much the main first thing I did was build out the bed frame. It is a full king size bed. It's a proper bed mattress. So it's a proper inner sprung pocket spring uh, king size mattress and it is ridiculously comfortable so I measured it out and then I bought the mattress if we get around the back I just wanted to be able to sit up and lean against the wall or something like that and have still have a little bit of headroom so that determined the height of the bed which I had to take into account the mattress because it's quite a thick mattress it's about 230 millimeters or something like that so the bed is just framed out with uh, four by two like I said with some poles either side and it's all just screwed together with like 75 mil screws um, there's nothing supporting it on the inside and then i put ply sheets down as the base so above this ply is the mattress there's nothing else above that i am going to drill some holes in the thing with the hole saw through the mattress um, sorry through the bed base just to give the mattress some ventilation and in the back here i'm just going to build some drawers as well that slide out about 1200 mil so two or three big giant drawers that'll solve my storage problem in the back so if we go back around to the front you'll be able to see so that's the underside of the mattress there um, pretty basic and then once I had the bed in um, I could obviously build all this other stuff around it because the bed was my main concern I'm not a good sleeper and I wanted to be able to have a really good night's sleep so the bed was the main thing 
and when I was buying the van I bought it based on the bed size pretty much so you can't fit a king size bed in a normal size highest uh, only in the jumbo wide body one so then moving on the next thing I built was this cabinet here and this is just again framed out with 4x2 nothing super fancy just a basic frame basically determined by I wanted a 600 mil wide bench to put my sink in and a gas cooker and stuff like that so framed out with that and then I just used 12 mil ply to uh, box it in and this bench top was just a really budget kitchen bench top that I got from Bunnings the same with the doors that's the same material so this one opens up here like that and that, at the moment it's just got my gas cooker so kind of unorganized I don't have a proper one so it's just a gas make double burner and then I have my gas bottle in here just sitting there eventually I'm going to cut one into the top into here just like a one or two burner um, cooker in there and that'll just be fed down to the gas bottle if I put the camera up and then this one here just folds up like that and I have this pole here which goes into the floor and that is also my desk so yeah that makes my desk um, it's really nice and stable and all my water tanks are on there so I just have a that one's the fresh water tank and the grey water tank and it's just plumbed in really simply with a little smell trap there and I uh, just have a hand pump on the sink I'm not sure if there's any water oh, there's a little bit of water in there left so I'm eventually going to get a 12 volt uh, water pump because that one's just kind of annoying but it'll do for now and it got me my self containment cert anyway so that's my desk set up so I can basically just come and sit over here and uh, work away I can have my laptop here I have a power jack down here which I'll show you in a second which uh, allows me to charge the laptop and my phones and whatever if I come back around and put the table away oh and by the way that one was so that's just like a door grab handle I just sunk it into the floor and then there's another one of these in the bottom side of the table and that just makes it so that the pole doesn't slide out so that's how I built the table and then over here I just have my control panel which goes to the battery which is also inside here and that's my cabin lights so that's these ones under here looks really nice in uh, at night time it's quite bright and it glows up the whole sort of area here if you're cooking or anything it's fantastic that one is the spotlight which I added afterwards so that's this one here doesn't look too bright right now but uh, at night time it's quite bright almost too bright but that just lights up this whole area uh, under the awning if you're cooking or anything like that and then on the side here also I added these afterwards because I needed a little bit more storage so it's just houses like you know whatever any little bits and pieces you have and a cup holder this will be my like my coffee station because coffee is everything and I want to be able to get up and make it early in the morning and also this one has USB so it's got two 2.1 amp USBs and then a uh, cigarette lighter socket there and then this one here this USB socket and the fridge so that just turns on the fridge which I'll show you in a second but the USB socket is this one around here on the back so I just built this little shelf behind the bed um, and that just has another USB 12 volt socket there so basically your phone can just sit in here and charge away overnight or I can charge my iPad mini which I have just on a RAM mount so you can just sort of lay in bed and watch movies because you know they get bored easily so coming back into here if I take these cushions out these cushions were just from the warehouse I actually made some before and they were a little bit crappy looking and I found these when I was looking for random stuff and it worked out perfectly so moving on and here I have the toilet which is just a porta potty type uh, toilet which you have to have in New Zealand for the self-containment cert but it's there in emergencies and then in here I have all my battery stuff so I need to clean this all up quite badly because you know it's really not an ideal situation at the moment but I just need to clean up all the wiring and stuff but basically I have a really good quality 120 amp hour AGM battery and I also have a charger so this is a hard wired charger which I can plug into the mains power if I'm at a campground or something like that and that just charges the battery also and then also everything off here is fused with these breaker switches and that leads in through to the underside of here 
which houses my uh, VSR switch. So that is a um, VSR switch which charges the battery off the alternator. Uh, and it also has an override there, so if I get a flat battery, you can flick that and it will charge the starting battery. So yeah, really basic option. I don't have any solar or anything yet because money mostly and it's not really needed at the moment I've found. Um, I also just have a little tiny smoke detector there just in case anything pops you know safety first. Here is just the back side of that fuse panel and these are all fused as well so that's pretty handy and then I just have a block here which um, just takes all the ground wires so one main ground going to the driver's seat bolt there which goes to the battery and then around into the fuse panel. Um, if you guys want a more in-depth sort of guide on how I made that system, um, let me know and I'll post that as well. But um, basically that battery is enough to power this fridge for a few days without even moving. And the alternator charges it up really, really fast. So, um, you know, if I was more heavily using more power, then I'd probably change it out or add another battery, which I might do at some point. And eventually I will get solar, so I'll just get like a MPPT charger and a, like a 100 watt solar panel or 200 watt maybe and chuck that on the roof as well. But for now, this is great and it powers all these lights in the fridge, no worries at all. And I'm not someone that's gonna go somewhere and sit there for a week. So I'm gonna be driving for a few hours at least every second day. Um, and that is plenty enough to charge up the alternator. And if I'm at a campground, that battery charger, like I showed you, is heaps enough power. To, that, that charges it pretty fast and right up to 14.7, 14.8 volts, which is needed to maintain the AGM batteries. So I'll just chuck all these cushions back. And that also just gives me a spot that I can just chill out in as well. So if I just want to chill out and sit by the window or something, I can um, just come and lounge out over here like that, this window opens up, if I want to get some fresh air, there's another one of these on the other side. But that's great just for sitting with my laptop if I just want to chill or watch a movie or something like that, that iPad can turn around. And yeah, it's really, actually really comfortable. So moving on, um, if you guys watch my Jeep stuff, my Jeep videos, you would have seen these, this drawer system I built for the Jeep. So this was in the back of my Wrangler. Um, so that just slides out at the moment, I just have my camera bag in there. And my laptop's underneath that but that'll hold like clothing and stuff when i'm when i go away and then this one here is my fridge so that's like a 50 liter um, but that holds heaps and heaps of food it's it's quite large this divider comes out if you want it to and yeah that just slides away like so um what else oh and i added this floor mat because i just cut it up it's just like a house one cut it up and that just means you can wipe your feet off if we walk inside and run crap everywhere oh and then on the walls here i just put this it's just like tongue and groove you know like tongue and groove paneling like 130 by 10 mil i think i just put that either side i just like the look of it to be honest it looks nice and up here i just have a carbon monoxide alarm just in case better than suffocating to death uh, and yeah, the um, the wood paneling just sort of goes around that window there. I'm not decided what I'm going to do on the ceiling yet. This is just stock, so um, you guys let me know what you think I should do. And uh, if you have any ideas or anything like that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, and then the awning is just a basic Rhino Rack Sunseeker, so it just comes out straight. It's not like the 360 one or anything. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So that's my van, that's what I've done so far. I have a lot more plans for it. I want to get it wrapped, like I said, and do a bunch of other things, um, add little bits here and there. But if there's any advice I can give you, it's going to be really just think about the most important things that you want. Like, you know, in my case, I wanted the big bed. I wanted somewhere to sit and I wanted a desk and just be able to cook inside here and, you know, just do bits and pieces like that. Um, you know, I wasn't worried about a shower, so just think about what's really important to you and then go from there. In terms of actually building it, I would say the most important thing to do first is just get that ply floor down um, so you have a flat base to start building off. And then everything else around that, it, just frame it out first and then the easiest way I found, I mean really the only way I know, is I framed it out first and then 
put the ply on it to sort of box it in and make it a cabinet and in terms of like buying stuff on the cheap you know none of this stuff was really expensive it definitely was less than a thousand dollars to build all of this look for bargains around even like salvage wood and stuff like that pallet wood you can get untreated non-structural plywood really really cheap uh, bunnings have it for like 35 dollars a sheet and it goes really far if you plan it right and same in terms of power i wouldn't get too carried away like with power people go all out i've seen videos on youtube where people have like a thousand watts of solar and i mean that's amazing it's great it means you can be off grid forever but just think about what you're actually going to do with power just figure out exactly what you want and what you need and just start simple like definitely get an agm battery lithiums are great but they're really expensive uh, in the long run they probably work out better because they last longer and they're more efficient and stuff but like a 100 amp hour battery if you're just running a fridge and charging laptops and cameras and stuff should be fine um, check that vsr switch in there the dual battery kit so you can charge off the alternator that's a really basic mod um, some vans you can't do that if it's a more modern van like 2010 onwards so that some of them have smart alternators and they don't charge the batteries properly so just check that per each vehicle but even so it's still a good thing to add so just get the vsr switch or a dc dc charger is sort of the more modern equivalent to it um, and there's a whole bunch of videos on youtube of how to do that so look them up but if you guys have any questions i'm going to answer them i'm going to keep an eye on it and answer them really quickly and i'll make any other videos that you guys want to see to do with the van or anything also i want to touch on the self-containment cert process um, it was really you know it's something you have to have really in New Zealand if you want to camp anywhere you know like if you don't have it there's a lot of places you can't camp which sucks so like most of the free spots you need to have a self-containment cert I'm not sure what it's like around the west, rest of the world but here you have to have it but basically all you need is a sink with running water fresh water and a grey water tank a portable toilet that you can use while the bed's made up that's pretty much it really that's all you need to, to have it so just get those things and then the cert process was really easy it was like 120 dollars 100 bucks maybe um and they it, they done it the same day so the sticker turned up same day i have the, the one on the windscreen as well and um yeah all self-contained so really simple process not complicated at all and highly recommend doing it there's another one also that's going on in new zealand now which is like responsible camping i can't remember exactly what it's called i'll put a link in the description below but it's like responsible camping association or something um and it's really it's really good thing it's i'm, I'm gonna, definitely going to do that and support that as well because just because you have a self-containment cert doesn't really mean you're a responsible camper so um, you know in terms of like the wilderness and cleaning up after you and stuff like that so that's a different good one to check out as well i'll put a link in the description below if you're in new zealand check that out and yeah any questions let me know i'm just on my way to make another video and i'm going to do my q a section now also but thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one